What is my level of addiction to romance? Uh, on a scale of one to five, I would have to say a four, five being the highest. And mainly that's because I love to read romance of all genres, but I write it, I narrate it, and I like to read it, but sometimes I do need a break. So I read poetry or spiritual type books and or business books just or to learn things. So I have to say that every once in a while my brain needs to change it up just to have a bit of a change and to do something different. And do I prefer ebook over print? Well there's something about holding a print book in your hand that I really like and you get lost in the pages and there's just something so tangible about that. So I do love my print books, especially the ones that are signed by my favorite authors. But I have fallen in love with my Kindle, which I can hold hundreds of books and I can take it everywhere to the doctor's office, to um, on my trips, so that I have tons of books at my fingertips and in one small little thing. So I do happen to like both. I just don't prefer one over the other. What is my oldest memory related to books? That would have to be being a young child, sitting in my bed and having my mother read to me. She always read to my sisters and I at bedtime every night. One book in particular always stands it in my mind, and I think she gave a copy of it to me when I had kids. It's called The Little Book, and one of the lines in the book is something like, a little dog is called a puppy, a little fish is called a guppy, or something like that. And the whole book went on and on about that. And I just remember that book in particular and my mom reading to me. As for when I got a little bit older, I recall trying to collect all of the hardcover Nancy Drew books when I was a kid. And I loved Nancy Drew and the mysteries and her little romance with Ned. And I really enjoyed those. And I don't think I ever collected them all. And I think my older daughter got some of them. But the whole collection that I had was lost. So my new dream is to actually one day own all 64 books in that collection. see by that picture, that is my bookshelf. It is not very large. It is full of books, and right now it's very messy because I just won a bunch of books um, when I was at a conference, and so I have things all over the place, plus I have other author swag, and I have my own author swag, and it's just kind of this messy shelf thing right now, but that is my bookshelf, and I do have some of my own books on there, Rebound, The Perfect Score, Secrets and Desires of the Heart, which is a poetry collection that I wrote, as well as another collection that I had published. So I like to see my own books on my shelf with all of my favorite authors. And the author that I have on there the most books from would be Eloisa James. And not only because I love her exquisite writing, and every time she comes out with a new book, I have to buy it. But years ago, when I was trying to figure out this whole publishing world, and I didn't really know where I was going and what I had to do, my sister, who's a librarian, suggested that I email some of my favorite authors and just ask for any tips that they might have on getting published. So I did, and Eloise was one of them, and she told me about the Romance Writers of America and about their organization, so I ended up joining and then going to conferences, and just because she took the time to give me that little bit of information, which was so gracious of her, I am now a published romance author, which is awesome. So, um, yeah, so she's the one that I have the most on my bookshelf. What makes a romance novel a great love story, and how would I define romance? Well, to answer the first part of the question, a great uh, love story for me is where two people are not only working together to solve the external problems or struggles that are around them, but that they're also recognizing their own internal struggles as well, and that they're trying to overcome those, whether they want to love someone or trust someone. And by the end of the story, I like to see that both characters, uh, main characters, have evolved. 
I don't think it's fair in a story or real life when only one person evolves and the other one doesn't. I like to see that both people are working to make themselves better and also to make their relationship better. Now, how would I define romance? Well, it, for me, romance is not about money, fancy cars, you know, exotic vacations, having the perfect body. I mean, those things are all nice, don't get me wrong, but they're not realistic. And what I really feel as to define romance is about paying attention. For example, Dan Blake in my book, Celery Sex and Other Good Things for the Heart, I gave him a line where he says that a man can learn a lot about a woman by what she says as much as by what she doesn't say, provided he pays attention. And I think that in a relationship when you're paying attention to not only what someone says but to what they don't say because the silences can also speak volumes and sometimes it's picking up on their little nonverbal communication as well as by listening to what they actually say you know for example does your girlfriend um, well she likes chocolate so you know that but do you know what her favorite kind is or with your boyfriend he likes beer but do you know what his his favorite is can you would you be able to pick that up? And sometimes there's, you know, somebody might say they don't want anything for their birthday, and yet, do you know them well enough to figure out maybe what you could get for them that would be a surprise? So I think that romance for me is a lot about paying attention to what someone says and what they don't say, and really um, working on that kind of communication. And for me, that defines romance.